This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. Welcome to our post-hurricane coverage. Thank you for joining us. Topping the news tonight, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie, along with leaders of CARICOM, traveling to Grand Bahama to review and recommend levels of assistance needed on the island. After the assessment, the Chairman of CARICOM and Prime Minister of Dominica pledged his support in a tangible way. Shishina Roll reports. The nation's leader traveling to Grand Bahama for the second time since Hurricane Matthew ripped through the island. This time, a part of his delegation included the chairman of CARICOM and the secretary general. The tour began with a first-hand view of the area hardest hit in Grand Bahama, the quaint community of West End. Then, the damage to the southern districts, the Freeport and Lukaya area were also viewed. The nation's leader, while addressing a cross-sector of the business community and relevant stakeholders, said that the first bit of good news is the fact that 183 technical support persons will travel to the island to restore power. Christie says as the government moves swiftly to ensure that the country is restored back to some level of normalcy, undoubtedly fairness will be the order of the day. That hurricanes don't have politics. Disaster doesn't distinguish and discriminate on the basis of politics. And that I had to have a minister because notwithstanding the fact that we have to raise special money, that means borrow for this hurricane, because we are still trying to use monies to pay for Hurricane Joaquin. The nation's chief says that he is now in discussions with the clearing banks to raise a bond of some 100 to 150 million dollars. However, he believes that the damage left behind will far exceed that amount. But that we are in the process of doing that now because the country had to continue with its governance. Clinics have to be built. Schools have to be built. You see him breaking ground on here. The fishing road has to be built. The new junior high school has to be built here in Grand Bahama. All of the activities that we are engaged in must be done nationwide. While Prime Minister Christie has appointed Minister of Labor Shane Gibson to oversee the restoration efforts in the country, he says that they are committed to bringing about efficient and effective ways of bringing relief to the people. In other parts of the Bahamas, duty-free provisions, covering furniture, furnishings, building materials, vehicles, but all that could be possibly damaged and need to be restored that we have to think of facilitating easy access to funding by public officers, many of whom were working whilst their homes were being damaged and destroyed. And so we have to, to put some pro special provisions in place for them. We have to recognize that there are the indigent people in our country who simply will need the government's assistance. And otherwise, a category of persons who will receive our assistance and our help. Prime Minister of Dominica and Chairman of CARICOM, Roosevelt Garrett says his country has also suffered at the hands of a storm just last year. Uh, we are in standby uh, from the Caribbean community standpoint with regards to the provision of um, technical people uh, to assist with the restoration of the electrical lines and, and poles. The teams on standby are uh, ready to come in at um, at a moment's notice to assist and we'll be discussing this later today uh, on this particular matter. From the government, the Dominican standpoint, in a very humble way, uh, we would have um, transferred today um, to the government of Bahamas as a um, small contribution to the response to Hurricane Matthew, a, a sum of US $100,000 that would have go towards uh, Uh, it's going to require, I mean, several hundreds of millions of dollars uh, with all of the homes that have been impacted upon. Shishina Roll, ZNS Network News. Well, the Secretary General to CARICOM, Edwin LaRogue, also viewing firsthand the devastation left behind by Hurricane Matthew. 
During a press briefing at the Pelican Bay Hotel, he shared how the CARICOM officials visited Haiti just yesterday. He says here on Grand Bahama, the damage is significant. Unless you're here to see it, you don't understand the extent of the damage, especially when we drove down uh, to West End, the community of West End. I mean, every single house there, as far as I could see, has been extensively damaged, or damaged in one way or another, and some of them very extensively damaged. Uh, I was very heartened to hear what the, the representative of the power company is saying, because I lost count of how many power lines were down, and the necessity of restoring that uh, so that persons can begin to have a semblance of returning their lives to normalcy is so critical. We have here on the ground the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CIDEMA. Uh, a number of persons have come in with the assistance of a number of our member states to assist the disaster uh, recovery effort. Um, the head of the Disaster Emergency Office is also coming in today and we'll be speaking with him and I'm sure Prime Minister Skerritt and I will be able to sort of give some more direction in terms of getting some critical aid on the ground here. The nation's leader also making a stop at the Band Memorial Hospital to get a pulse on the operations of the health care facility in the aftermath of the storm. The nation's leader found out that the hospital is having its share of challenges. Shashina Roll reports. That is our electricity from generators and our water from our pumps and our auxiliary water systems. So of course it is very critical that they remain operational for us to run our various facilities from east to west as far as 8 Mile Rock, Grand Key and Sweetings Key have been running on generator power and <laughs> emergency water tanks. We are talking about matters of life and death. We have to ensure that those various systems, the generators and the water system remain up so we can provide emergency care. It's not only the regular services that we're talking about, we're talking about actually actual emergency care for our operating theaters, our emergency room, our lab systems, and our IC. The Grand Mama Power Company working to restore electricity on the island. The entire island was plunged into darkness during Hurricane Matthew and power officials hope to restore power to the first group of consumers tonight. Italia Hall reports. It's been six days since Hurricane Matthew struck the island of Grand Bahama and power crews have been working non-stop to restore power. The power company's assessment revealed that 1,250 distribution poles and 225 transmission poles need to be replaced which equates a total of 92,363 man-hours of work. Work crews from Tampa Electric, Grand Bahama Power, and local contractors have already erected a total of 130 poles. The president of the Grand Bahama Power Company, Sarah McDonald, says restoration will be a little different than in the past because of the extent and damage to transmission lines. The traditional approach would mean no one would be energized for weeks. Instead, we have selected the least damaged lines to clear so that we can progressively restore customers. This approach will mean that you may have no power and look across the street and see a neighbor with power. You may look around your area and see no damage. But the power grid is a connected web. And if there is damage, some, damage somewhere further down the line, your power may still be off. She says that 4,000 or 20% of customers will receive power sometime after 8 p.m. tonight. Our Lucaya, Pelican Bay Hotel, Port Lucaya, and UNEXCO. Coopers, Port Lucaya Yacht Club, Kings Road, Harbor House Towers, Victoria Inn. The Ridge area, Coral Beach Hotel, Silver Sands area, R&D Plaza, Caravelle Beach, Imperial Park, Lunar Boulevard, Bahama Terrace area, Port of Call Drive, Quan Yin, Burger King, and Polo Tropical. John Cell Court and Tivoli Garden. 
Now the president says that safety is the company's main priority and she's encouraging all residents to stay away from these power lines as they can be very dangerous during this restoration process. So you may think that if an area has no power that you are safe to touch the line. This is not true. McDonald says if there's any visible damage that poses a safety risk for residents, work crews will not restore power. She also provided these safety tips. When resetting circuit breakers, wear dry rubber soled shoes and stand on something dry and non-conductive, such, such as a piece of dry wood or wooden furniture. If you have any doubts about your home's electrical system or are unsure of how to proceed, call a professional license, licensed electrician. Over the next five days, the company will be bringing in another 132 linemen and support personnel as well as 78 vehicles from Nova Scotia Power, Emera Utility Services and Emera Maine. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Thanks, Italia. The Urban Renewal Team here on Grand Bahama conducting an assessment of the damage in the various communities throughout the island for residents. It was a good opportunity to share some incredible stories of survival. Joan Davis Roll has the story. We should give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, I trust in thee. When Hurricane Matthew descended on Grand Bahama, it not only shattered homes, but lives. It is the lives of countless residents that Urban Renewal 2.0 set out to touch Tuesday morning. The mission of Help and Hope, led by Deputy Director Michelle Rackley and her team, convened on the grounds of the Harold de Gregory Complex and boarded a bus. Their destination? The hurricane-ravaged areas here in the nation's second city. When hundreds of call urban renewal officials were on the ground here on Grand Bahama trying to assess the damage and bring help and hope to those in need. The first stop was the Gilbert Crest area of Freeport, where a disabled man with no legs, along with his wife, gave a chilling account of how during Hurricane Matthew, they had to literally run for their lives in search of shelter as the ferocious storm burst through a place they call home. So rough. When I looked through the front door and a lightning flash and when I heard in the kitchen it say pop and my one say mommy look at the water Grammy and when I listen they say in my bedroom all the all the ceiling was dropping the hole of the bed and they take out that mattress and throw that away and Every way damage, every way. But thank God, I got a able renewal. I got a lady directly. I got said and asked, and most of all, I got the Lord. House blow off, roof blow off, and I still thank God for everything I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna kill me because I, I can't get around to fend for myself. You can see almost every room in the house is destroyed. And we have here, of course, Mr. Green, who cannot do much for himself. So we have to make this priority and get them sorted out as quick as possible. Hopefully um, today I should have a contractor on the roof. Just as touching was how this deadly hurricane impacted the lives of residents, both great and small. I was scared when I heard the thing say, Paw! And then when we hear one thing we had a water stain, and one thing we had a water on the floor, then we had to get the white cooler to put it there. And then when we hear the girl Brittany say, and Shawnee was leaking, and then a couple of minutes after that, the next room was leaking. And then we had to call our brother quick, 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 as fast as we could, and we would have been drowning. It was then onto the Scott Avenue area, but this resident says Hurricane Matthew may have destroyed a home but not her indomitable spirit. I was praying my last prayer. Oh yeah, it was awful. He had me very terrified. My boy had to go inside of all of that big storm and try push up these windows because all was going out and he gets some stick and he was hollering and crying. And I've been trying to hold one such light and I fall down. Next, it was on to the Southern District where the trail of destruction spans the entire stretch of that coastal community. Lewis Yard resident Simon Lewis says he rode out the storm in his home and is thankful to be alive. He stated that the mass destruction on this island of Grand Bahama is unprecedented. We got a prime minister with a heart. That's the first thing that's going to happen. 
but then you got Urban Yule there, who he put in place to do situations like this. And I would really love to see them just like, like they're doing today. You know, I mean, I was very surprised to see them on the ground this early, walking door to door and assessing what these people needs are. Because these people need some serious help. I'm sure that the Prime Minister is having a lot of sleepless nights. I'm sure he's meeting with individuals and he is going to do everything he can to bring restoration as quick as possible. John Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. Thank you, June. District Superintendent of Education for Grand Bahama Bimini and the Keys, Mary Cooper, addressing the state of schools on Grand Bahama. Assessments have been conducted by the Ministry of Works, and every school on the island has sustained some level of damage. In particular, the roofs of our schools, some very minimal, others extensive damage. In particular, the Lewis Yard Primary School, the Bartlett Hill Primary School, Martin Town Primary School, Eight Mile Rock High School, the Jack Hayward Senior High School, and Sister Mary Patricia Junior High School. Those schools, we have received some extensive damages. A date has not been set for the reopening of schools on the island. Cooper says that they are in need of assistance for the cleanup of schools. She says once light and water have been restored, classes can resume. But in most cases, uh, once we get light and water and cleanup, we can have school. At the West End um, Primary School, the area that has been affected um, are not the classrooms. Actually, it's a uh, home ec room, um, the teacher staff room, and the library. So we need to relocate Bartlett Hill Primary School and the Lewis Yard Primary School. Those um, schools we do need to relocate. We are already working on that, and we do have some solutions, but I don't want to say now. Stay with us, there's more news after this.